All right. So, this is surgical crike. Are you guys right-handed? Yes, sir. Okay. If as right-handed clinicians, you're always going to want to be on the right side of the patient. What does that mean? That means what's our target area when we surgically crike? What's our endpoint? What are we trying to do? Okay, and get oxygen where? To the lungs. So the lungs, when I say be on the right-hand side, if you're a right-handed clinician, those lungs need to be on your right-hand side. That will take away, well, I'm, I could still be on the right-hand, what's right-hand, now I'm on the right-hand side of the patient, negative. You're always going to be on the right-hand side as a right-handed clinician because you're going to hold and you're going to cut. You can't do the opposite. Hold, now you're all crisscross, okay? So what do you need for, for a crike? You need your scalpel. You need your landmarks, hopefully. A 5.5 or 6.0 ET tube, never bigger than a 6.0 ET tube, okay? Um, you, if you don't have a tray cook, you can make a tray cook by taking an 18 gauge needle, coming halfway out and just bending it. And now I've got an, I've got an outstanding tray cook if you, if you need it. I carry a bougie with me, a, a crike bougie. The bougie is only this long. If all you have in your ambulance is those, all those really long bougies, just cut it in half real quick. That way you're not way out here saying, hey, mustache, load my tube from you know, the, the next ambulance over. Okay? So you're, uh, you'll find your landmarks just like you would. Um, and the decision to crike is very simple. Can't intubate, can't ventilate, we're done. All the decisions have been taken away from us. I can't, I can't bag them. I've got an OPA, I've got bilateral MPAs. I squeeze, I've repositioned the head. I skin all that's happening, our cheeks are puffing out, I'm not getting oxygen in. I will give myself one chance to tube him. If I can't tube that patient, and then it's sat starting to fall, I'm gonna say, make it happen, and crike. And now I go from a primary role to a support role in supporting you. In a difficult airway scenario, 223 to the face, you know, real hor uh, horrific burn to the face. I'm going to go into it thinking, set up for a crike. I'm going to set up for intubation. I'm going to do my techniques. And when I can't do that, I'm going to look at you and say, make it happen. I'm going to drop what I'm doing, except the BBM, and I'm going to move to support you. That's how you work, and that's how you save lives, okay? We joke that takes 10 minutes to crike, nine minutes to talk about it, and one minute to do it. So how you guys are going to do it, you're going to make your cut, just like I taught you before, knife hand, pinky on the patient's sternal notch this is their sternal notch and you just take your your index finger and you walk it up the cricothyroid membrane or walk up the neck until you find that cricothyroid membrane which you know is always below the the big adam's apple right the thyroid gland once i find it i'm taking my my left hand my thumb my middle finger and i'm tenting that skin as tight as i can and now my finger replaces where my cricothyroid membrane is okay where this finger was it's right in that cricothyroid membrane. I'm gonna unshield my scalpel. This is your surgical hand. We're not cutting up chicken. So I need you to act like a surgeon. One or two fingers will rest on the patient's chest cavity. All right, that way it'll stabilize you and you won't be like, oh my God, sir, I'm sorry, I've never done this before because you're gonna be a little nervous. As soon as I find my landmark, I'm gonna back my finger up and I'm gonna make my linear incision, my transverse incision. Well, actually, my vertical, I'm sorry. Because the state of Arizona, you guys have to do vertical to transverse. That's your medical direction. You want to make that incision straight, and you want to make it at least an inch long. Don't shortchange yourself and make it too short. It's very common to do. We can always re you know, fix that in the OR later. I make my incision. As I make my incision now, I'm spreading that skin, and that's going to open up that, that, that skin. There is going to be blood, and that is okay. Blood works as a great lubricant as well, okay, the patient's own. All right, so once I spread the skin, I want to find that cricothyroid membrane. If it's too bloody, just take your 4x4, four four, blot, 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 and then make that incision through the cricothyroid membrane. See, I still have just instinctually, I have my finger on the patient's chest. I cut towards me. You'll feel the end of where the tracheal ring stops because you'll get a little resistance. Keeping the blade in there, I just flip it around. I go the other side. Now, this is where you have a couple choices, all right? This is where I would actually start reshielding my scalpel, and I drop my pinky through that cricothyroid membrane. If my pinky goes through it, a 6.0 tube goes through it, and I have no problem that I didn't make it the hole big enough, right? Then I can, and when I carry a bougie, I just drop my bougie right through there, and I just load my tube, end tidal, pull my bougie out, off the X, right? You can use a crike hook if you want. Once you make the incision big enough too, you can actually shield your scalpel flip this around and put this in and angle it down towards the trachea. Then when you bank your tube, 
If you bank your two right off that, it's only going to go one way. You can never accidentally retrograde them. All right? You just have to be careful. If you use a bougie or, or a, a, a tray cook, you don't go straight down because you can actually take that bougie and puncture it through the trachea, through that little mucosal area. All right? You guys ready? Make it happen. Find your landmarks. Sternal notch. Walk that finger up. It'll drop right into that cricothyroid membrane and then replace that with your left index finger. Okay? Once you're ready, keep your fingers there, get your scalpel, unshield your scalpel, all right? Keeping one, one or two fingers on the patient's chest, just push down and back. Down, push this down first. Like this, down and then back. Like that. And then it'll, it'll relock, it'll re click on you. All right. Make your, vertical, make your vertical incision about an inch long. If you didn't make it big enough, you want to push down and make your cut. If you didn't make it big enough the first time, then you just replicate it, okay? Just don't do any hacking. Go, go right below the, the actual thyroid. You don't want to cut the thyroid in half. The patient will probably bleed to death. Make your vertical incision down. Find your cricothyroid membrane. All right. Oh, he's bleeding. There is. You have to actually palpate and uh, puncture through the cricothyroid membrane, which is about about as thick as your your uh, eyelid. It's not a, a thick procedure, All right? Do you find your cricothyroid membrane? Yeah, you, you did not make. You need to you need to get more real estate on that, brother. I mean, make that cut at least an inch long. Okay, really separate it. If it if it's in a linear fashion like that, the surgeons can put this back together very very beautifully. That way, they won't look like Frankenstein. All right, so make your incision and spread that tissue apart with your middle finger and your, your thumb, okay? And then take this finger and you can kind of dissect that tissue. Always keep the scalpel straight. I think I got it. All right, so you have to figure out how you're gonna keep that hole open. Either be careful with that scalpel, shield that scalpel. Either put, put the blade through there and turn it this way, bam! And you made your hole big enough, Okay, you can use your, your tray cook that we made with your 18. You can use your pinky, but just make the hole big enough so you can put your tube down. We, we have a cuff tube, so as soon as that cuff goes past your line of sight, that's as far as you're gonna make, uh, put your tube. Right where you at, brother? So you need to make your, make this scalpel cut a little bit deeper. Don't be afraid. There you go, straight down, no hacking, just a straight linear line. Straight linear line. These scalpels are sharp. Okay, then you would blow it up, end title, secure it, get off the X. Okay, so you got your finger through there, go down towards the lung, and then pass your tube. How was that? Corwin, how was that? Good, good. A little difficult, a little slippery. What was hard about it? Keeping track of the cricoid membrane, making sure I was still on there. Okay. And not going to the side. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Going through it. Does it feel real? Well, <laughs> I don't have first hand experience to say that, but it's definitely fleshy. <laughs> this is how we get in the space repetition for muscle memory, guys. Okay, so you can just, bam, when you need to make that de determination, we can't intubate, we can't ventilate. Let's just move on, let's crack them. Let's get off the X.